back on Monkey Mission Classroom. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about was non-compliance versus compliance. Um, in a classroom setting, um, it's very different than an ABA that they receive at home. Um, oftentimes with ABA, it's like if within five seconds, if they don't uh, respond, then they're being non-compliant. Um, in a classroom, that's not exactly how it works. Um, because you have to take the situation into consideration and ABA is often done one-to-one -one, whereas in a classroom they're in an environment with other students so there are multiple distractions that um, are w within that classroom um, but also uh, there are uh, you have to really think about uh, what the, the teacher is asking so a student may not necessarily be non-compliant because they didn't respond within five seconds. It's because they need a longer wait time to process what you're asking them to do. So that's why they're not responding, they're processing. Um, and oftentimes uh, that uh, processing time is looked at as the student being non-compliant. So, um, I want you to really think about that and consider compliance versus non-compliance in an educational setting versus ABA because it's very, very different. Um, a compliant student is one that, yes, follows directions, is able to respond, um, you know, and is able to um, interact and engage in a, uh, an appropriate manner. Uh, but a non-compliant student in an academic setting is one that is defiant, is um, will elope from tasks, um, often struggles to start tasks and, and complete tasks. Um, that is a non-compliant student, not someone that automatically just is needs that wait time to respond. Um, so... Uh, Really think about that uh, when you are working with your child. Um, don't uh, think they're being non-compliant. They're probably processing what you're asking them to do.